and welcome to this week's edition of The Travel Show with John Gwynn on UKHealthRadio.com. Got quite a lot to cram into this week's show. In a while we'll be finding out about swimming pools, half terms coming up for most of the UK and this might involve some indoor swimming pools somewhere. We can discuss about the things you should look out for before you get into the pool and uh, we'll find out whether the pool water does change colour if you pee in it. Also, it's getting a little bit chilly here, so you might want to pop over to Arizona. I'm not saying Arizona's hot everywhere in the winter, but it can get quite warm. And we're going to find out about that state in the USA as well. But my first guest is uh, Kayla Dunn, and she represents uh, North Norfolk. And with Halloween coming, she's put together some information on uh, the haunted North Norfolk area. My last house I lived in was nearly 200 years old, and there were ghosts there. I did see stuff. My wife saw stuff too. We never told each other. We told the same friend and then she said we perhaps we should talk to each other. So that was interesting when we got while well, we got used to the comings and goings. I'm in a brand new build now and I don't think it's on any burial ground so there's unlikely to be any hauntings. Although some of the children in the village are little horrors but that's a different story. Anyway, uh, as I said, Kayla represents Visit North Norfolk and the first thing I wanted to know was why North, why is North Norfolk one of the most haunted places in the UK? Well, it's to do with the amount of sightings and the stories that we hear about ghosts compared to the size of the area um, of North Norfolk. It's actually 384 square miles. So with the amount of uh, hauntings that we uh, are said to have taken place um, and not the size of the area, it makes us one of the most haunted places. So we have a lot of history and heritage in the area. So alongside that comes lots of legends, stories and ghostly sightings. So what's so ghostly about the Bickling estate? Well, the old house at Bickling was in the possession of the Boleyn family, um, home to Thomas Boleyn and later Earl of Wiltshire and his wife Elizabeth between, I think it was around 1499 and 1505. Um, Historians are quite confident that the three surviving children were born there, Mary in about 1500, Anne in a year later in 1501, and George three years later in about 1504, uh, there's actually a statue or, or portrait of Anne at Blickling Estate, which carries the inscription Anne Boleyn, born here in 1507. So we're quite confident about that. Um, and the house that, of Blickling that's seen today, that was actually built on the ruins of the old Boleyn property, um, and that took place in the reign of James I. So we know that Anne was beheaded around 480 years ago, and it's reported um, that Anne Boleyn is said to ride, carrying her head, uh, of course, she was um, uh, beheaded by her husband through the Blickling State on the anniversary of her execution. Sir Thomas, her father, he said to make an appearance there every now and then as well. He was involved in a secret commission, which included Thomas Cromwell, Anne's father, and her uncle, the Duke of Norfolk, were put forward to inquire into allegations of sexual misconduct and witchcraft by the Queen, Anne. So he was involved in the betrayal of Anne. So I think that's why he seemed to make an odd appearance at Blickling Estate. Sounds scary already, and we've got more to go through. <laughs> a bit nervous. I know, it's quite a lot of history, isn't it? <laughs> it is. So what are the yow yows? The noise is believed uh, to be the calling from the doomed mariners who were drowned in a storm. Um, they were in trouble, and no one attempted to save them. They were too frightened to go out to sea to save these um, mariners. So before a storm, these cries are heard from these poor drowned mariners, and it's reported that they are hoping to lure the living as a punishment into their own watery graves. Oh, the nasty so and so's, but I can see their point, Absolutely. I guess. Absolutely. <laughs> so, who's the lady in the brown dress? According to legend, the lady, um, the brown lady of Raynham Hall, is the ghost of Lady Dorothy Walpole, who died in 1726. She's the sister, she was the sister of Robert Walpole, who, of course, was regarded as the first Prime Minister of Britain. She was the second wife of Charles Townsend, who was notorious for his rather violent temper. And the story says that when Townsend discovered that his wife, um, the brown lady, had committed adultery. He punished her by locking her in a room in the family home at Raynham Hall. She remained there until her death in 1736, uh, where she died from smallpox. So she's known as the lady in the brown dress, and she seems to be wearing a brown brocade dress when she's been sighted throughout the hall. I've been on mud flats, and uh, they're quite smelly, but apparently the ones at uh, Stiff Key have something to be a bit scary. What's the scary thing about them? They are, yes. Um, 
Stiff key is famous for its blue cockles, and in the 18th century, um, they were gathered by the of Stiff key, who had to be quite hardy souls. They had to gather the cockles, put them in a sack, and haul them all the way back to shore. And it's actually said that a young girl, who we believe were called Nancy, she was lost while cockling after the tide had started to turn and the weather closed in, and there was a very thick fog. Um, the villagers actually did try to find her. They took to their boats and, and went across mudflats, but despite hearing her cries, they just couldn't find her. Um, the next day, Nancy's body was found, and they buried her in the local churchyard. But there's been lots of reports of her ghost being seen and screams heard while roaming the mudflats, particularly on foggy nights. The Queen's got a residence in North Nor- Norfolk. Is there any ghosts there? Well, it's thought that there was a poltergeist on Sandringham. Of course, Sandringham is a regular Christmas home for the royal family, and, and we've read that um, Prince Charles has reported a, a few uh, quite disturbing reports. So sudden blasts of cold air um, have been reported, as well as the hands of clocks moving freely, despite the mechanism. Uh, I think we've also heard about um, books are being seen to be flying off shelves, typical poltergeist stuff here, Christmas cards flying around the room, um, blankets being pulled off the beds, um, and some of the other things is uh, phantom footsteps and wheezing sounds, and then lights being switched on and off by themselves. There's several reports about uh, poltergeist going on at Sandringham. I'm sure sometimes you've got the wrong person around your house, a poor guys are coming quite handy. <laughs> help, them, help them leave quicker. Are, are there any other famous ghosts in the area? Yeah, there, there are lots. Um, to, main, uh, to name a couple more, there's Ghostly Whistler of Weybourne, um, where the whistles of, of well-known smuggler John Smythe can apparently be heard when the moon is full. Believe that the whistles are to attract the attention of his fellow tax evaders. And another one is, uh, according to legend, a network of tunnels beneath the village of Blakeney is said to be home to an array of creatures, and among them are the hydra sprites, and they're like long-legged spider-like creatures. Um, and it's also reported that um, fairies kidnap badly behaved children, which is a bit scary, who stray onto their salt marsh, but um, they return any lost children that are good to their families. So quite a few scary things going on. Are there any special events to celebrate Halloween this year? Uh, there's a lot going on for um, Halloween, and of course it falls over in October half term. Um, Holcomb Hall are having a Hocus Pocus Halloween event, uh, lots of crafts and storytelling. At Penstorpe, uh, the Nature Reserve, they're having a trick or treat event where you can discover the grim and gruesome side of nature. The railways in North Norfolk um, are having events, Wells and Walsingham are having a spooky ice spy train journey, and North Norfolk Railway are putting on a, a special ghost train. And then, of course, uh, Bewilderwood have their famous glorious glowing lantern parade. And if you find all that a bit frightening, Quaymer Pier are having a Halloween fright-free open day for all the family. You've done a lot of research into the hauntings of North Norfolk. Have you seen any ghosts yourself? I haven't, actually. I've spoken to people that have, um, but I haven't myself. But that's not to say I won't. I will keep my ears and eyes open. You never know. And, uh, never know. You never know. And finally, how can we find out more about what's on and what to see and do in North Norfolk? It's all on our website, uh, where it lists everything to, to do, to stay, and um, what's on. So it's at www.visitnorthnorfolk.com. Okay, thanks, Kayla. Thank you for your time. More than welcome. Thank you. You're listening to The Travel Show with John Gwynn on UKHealthRadio.com. Kayla put an article together for the Travel Trade and Travel Media. I will be posting the relevant information at facebook.com slash John Gwynn Travel Show, along with a reminder of the link for Visit North Norfolk. If there's anywhere you feel is haunted in the UK, please do let me know at the Facebook page. I'd be interested to go and have a look. You never know, I might be able to make a show out of it. Uh, an hour of me screaming because there's some ghosts around me. It sounds entertaining, I think. I, per- perhaps somebody's already done that before. At the beginning of the show, I didn't mention that I'd also be doing 107 travel tips at the end of the show. Little tips that can help you make the most of your travels, whether you're on the airplane or on a cruise or at the hotel, but that's still to come, along with the, all you need to know about visiting Arizona. My next guest is Chris Hayes. He represents Sparta, which is the Swimming Pool and Allied Trades Association. Who better to talk to about swimming pools and what to look out for? I have been in some places where there have been some really filthy swimming pools in the past. You can even smell how bad they were. 
Uh, that was before I was in the travel trade, and that's before I knew what I was doing. That's when I was going to cheap places. But with half term coming up for most of the UK, you might be going to places which have indoor swimming pools. They're not exempt or immune from getting filthy, so what do you want to check out for before you get in? And that's the first thing we're going to find out from Chris. There's no agreed standards or laws in the UK or indeed for for Europe at the moment, but there is a general duty of care um, to not cause harm. Mm-hmm. Um, having said that, there's a great deal of guidance, range of documents, um, including managing health and safety in swimming pools, which is a, an HSE document. There's also a document on treating swimming pool water from a body called PUTAG, Pool Water Treatment Advisory Group. Mm-hmm. Um, so I think they're the they're the main things. Although I'm hoping there's going to be some domestic swimming pool standards in Europe, and I'm sure that in future there may well be some commercial pool standards in Europe as well. But that's a little way way off yet. I'm sure it'll come. So when you do clean a pool, what chemicals are you used? Because people just say it's chlorine. Is it as simple as that? Yeah, t- typically it's chlorine. Most UK public and private pools use a form of chlorine. Um, some, if they prefer not to use chlorine, will tend to use bromine. It can be a little bit more expensive, but often gives a better atmosphere in indoor pools. Um, and then virtually all pools need some form of pH adjustment. So there's a pH minus is, a, is some form of acid, and then you get a pH plus to raise it, so sort of soda ash, etc. Mm-hmm. And then it may need water balancing chemicals such as sodium bicarb or baking soda, etc. Um, there's a range of documents um, available on Pewtag's website about chlorine and, and its use. Sounds a bit complicated. So it's just not pouring a bottle of uh, bleach into the pool then? No, and in fact, quite often people think they can put um, household chemicals into swimming pools, and that's the first mistake they make. You do actually need to use proper chemicals, so I'd always advise to get uh, specialist advice, you know, talk to a local swimming pool installer or local company selling chemicals. With the chemicals in the water, if it's properly cleaned, how much of the water can you swallow before it does some harm to you? Um, Typically, any amount of water to excess can be harmful. So, you know, Mm -hmm. a a small amount of water may be okay. Having said that, if if there were bugs in there, you know, say from E. coli, etc., then there is the possibility that, that they may be in the water just long enough um to cause a problem so that's why you know chlorine at sort of levels of one part per million um kills e coli within 60 seconds if the ph is 7.5 so there are potentially times when if somebody did have an infection that there could be a risk hence the reason always for wanting you know good levels of sanitizer in the water i once read a story about a woman a mother who said that her daughter got pregnant because of the dirty swimming pool, which I'm pretty sure didn't happen. But if we mentioned E. coli, what other problems are there if a pool's not properly maintained? Yeah, hopefully the uh, the pregnancy story, then that's uh, not what I could comment on. <laughs> yeah. But in terms of the poorly maintained pools, there's, if you have a lack of chlorine or bromine, it, it can cause the spread of various diseases, cryptosporidium. There's a range of different diseases that it's important to resolve. And, of course, one must remember that there's chlorine in in drinking water to prevent things like cholera so it is important to, to have well-maintained pools that have got decent sanitizer in, in them loads of the hotel pools i've visited it always says that you should shower before you go in and loads of people don't what sort of problem does that cause 